Hello and welcome to this webinar from Glueware titled Glueware in Microsoft Azure Marketplace and version 3.7 highlights. My name is Michael Howe. I lead product marketing here at Glueware. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe. Helping me out on this session today, we also have Olivier Hoon Van, our CTO and co-founder, running one of the demos, and John Anderson, a software architect, running the Ansible integration demo. So we have a packed session for you today, so let's jump right into it. For today's session, we have a live demo for each of the content items, starting with a two-for-one, where we're going to jump into the Glueware availability in Microsoft Azure and show you how that is spun up, as well as running the new feature in version 3.7, Network Discovery. As we move into the 3.7 highlights, we're going to have four additional content segments, one on the new embedded workflows, showing you the enhanced model discovery workflow, also showing you the new role-based, the customizable role-based access in Glueware, and the regex editor, showing you a demo with state assessment, and then the last demo will be showing the Ansible integration with a new module to execute config, drift, and audit. So just announced at the recent ONUG Digital Live event, Glueware is now available in the Microsoft Azure Marketplace. Prior to that availability, Glueware is available as a software as a service through Amazon Web Services and also is available to install on-prem as one or more virtual machines, but that leads us into some of the challenges. Oftentimes in large enterprises, working with a new vendor and getting software up and running within their enterprise can be quite challenging. You may have dependencies on other teams for the compute resources, you may have difficulty in the procurement process working with new vendors and by making it available in the Microsoft Azure marketplace, it uh, really makes it streamlined to get the software up and running, begin using it, and also procure directly through Microsoft. So with the announcement, uh, Glueware is available and can be spun up in minutes. We're providing, as part of this limited time offer, a 30-day free trial that includes service, and support and more for qualified customers and cover a little bit more on the, on the end. In the demo following this slide, we're also gonna show you the new network discovery feature. This is new in 3.7. And really this is around the challenges that as we work with large enterprise, we often find that customers themselves oftentimes don't have accurate device inventory. So while with Glueware you could provide your inventory list and import that list. Oftentimes, if you don't have that accurate list, you're struggling to get the systems into Glueware to begin to automate them. Also, quite a few of our customers grow through acquisition. So when they acquire a new company, they need to quickly assess what hardware they have and perform an assessment. You know, do equi does equipment need to be replaced? Does equipment need to be uh, operating system upgraded or changed? Are there uh, new configuration standards that need to be applied. Also, many organizations deal with rogue network devices being added to the network, really kind of out of process. So what we're going to look at is Glueware's new discovery feature enables you to seed Glueware with a known network device and one or more credentials to attempt. Glueware will then crawl the network leveraging the ARP, Cisco Discovery Protocol, and Link Layer Discovery Protocol tables to discover those IP addresses, and then interrogate the devices. Glueware leverages a de device detect library now at 23 uh, operating systems and counting, and that enables us to interrogate those devices for details and then ultimately import them into Device Manager to continue automating with Glueware. So let's take a look at the demo of the Microsoft Azure Marketplace spin-up and then running Network Discovery. Here we are in the Microsoft Azure Marketplace. To find the Glueware offer, you can simply search the Marketplace for Glueware in the search bar. To get Glueware spun up, it requires some input on a short form fill template. Start with the Get It Now button. You can read more about this offer. I'm going to cover more at the end, but this is part of a free 30-day pilot to production trial offered during the pandemic. I'll cover more about that at the end. So click continue. Once the offer loads, click on the create button to get started. 
Here in the launch template, let's step through each of the required steps. So as I scroll down here on the basic options, it's pay as you go, but as mentioned, it's a free 30 day trial. In the resource group, this is gonna be already set up in your organization. So you're gonna select at which resources you're pulling from. You can select the region it deploys within. In this case, I'm using US West. You can enter the virtual machine name. In this case, I'm gonna enter Glueware ODL Demo. And next is to enter the SSH public key. You can generate that with tools like PuttyGen, but basically this is a pre-generated, pre-shared key that you input into the system. So I simply copy and paste that key into the field and hit next. Here in the virtual network settings, you choose the virtual network that you wanna create on. Again, these are going to be uh, pre-set within your environment and select the subnet used and click next into the Glueware settings. So here's the Glueware system name. For, for me and consistency, I'm gonna just assign it the same system name as the VM name. So it's Glueware ODL demo. You're going to want most likely the Glueware distribution center to be true. This enables connection from Glueware to back to a corporate uh, repository to distribute software packages. If you don't do that, you can still install software packages offline, but it is uh, more straightforward and simple to just download them straight from the distribution center. Next, you wanna install the admin password. So you're gonna need this when you log into the Glueware system. And just to note that Microsoft has fairly stringent password recommendations or restrictions. So uh, it, it has to be 12 characters at a minimum. So let me get that entered. meet all the requirements and re-enter. And finally, the admin email address. Next is to configure the email settings. So normally in your install, I, I would uh, definitely recommend you do this. Just for speed and simplicity, I am not going to set this up now since uh, this is just for demo purposes. Next, since Glueware is built using the CentOS operating system, you're essentially agreeing to the, the standard GPL v2 license. And then next is review and create. So now uh, Microsoft is taking all the inputs from that form and uh, validating your inputs. Once you're at a, a stage where you see validation passed, you can go ahead and click create. So that create button will spin up the underlying VM, the virtual machine, and the required compute, memory, storage, and other requirements for this deployment. So you're gonna just wait here for a few minutes until you see uh, the confirmation that your deployment is complete. Okay, now we see the confirmation that our deployment is complete. For the next step, you can either click go to the resource, or one thing I like to do is leave this screen open since there are sometimes uh, information I like to come back to, like the deployment details, I'm going to go back to my portal in a, another browser tab. And it's gonna take me to my main brow uh, Azure uh, services view here. And I'm gonna navigate into virtual machines. So in this list here, the virtual machines, I'm going to see the virtual machine I created, which is Glueware ODL demo and click into that. As I click into that, I'll see all the details about that virtual machine and the system created. The most important piece of information you're gonna need for the next step is the public IP address. So we're gonna go ahead and highlight that IP address and copy it, because we're gonna use that IP address and our Google Chrome browser here to connect to the Glueware orchestration engine. Now. What you're seeing here is the virtual machine is up and running. However, in the background, Glueware is going through its install process where it's installing the orchestration engine, the underlying databases, and other system components to be fully up and available. And that will take approximately uh, five minutes or so to complete. Okay, so once you're ready to connect to the Glueware orchestration engine, simply open a tab on your Google Chrome browser 
paste in the IP address, proceed. Okay, so the Glueware system is now installed and ready to go. We'll go ahead and sign in with the credential with the, the username admin and the password we created during the setup. Agree to the EULA from Glueware, proceed. So now Glueware is installed. However, there's a few administrative tasks you're gonna have to set, uh, set up, which include going into system settings and installing the licenses, creating your organizations or tenants for the network devices you're gonna manage, and creating your user profiles or connecting to your own LDAP or RADIUS for authentication and the users um, using the system. And then after that, you'll go into the solution management to load the required software packages. After that, you're, you'll be ready to go. This will be a very quick demonstration, but we wanted to take this opportunity to highlight a new feature in Glueware release 3.7. So once you are ready to roll with Glueware, one of the first steps you're going to do after you complete your administrative tasks is adding the devices you're going to manage. You're going to do that through the device manager. So in a brand new system, you're going to navigate in and you won't have any network devices yet in your system. You can import those devices via list. You can add and create them kind of manually, or you can leverage our newest feature here, which is the network auto discovery. So let's click on auto discovery and take a look here. And just a very quick demonstration of it. We are seeding Glueware with an initial device to connect to. We're then indicating the mechanisms in which Glueware is going to discover the other network devices. So we're going to leverage the ARP table. We could leverage the Cisco Discovery Protocol or Link Layer Discovery Protocol entries. And then once we discover those IPs, Glueware will proceed through the network and you can specify the depth at which Glueware is going in terms of the number of hops away. So you can see the connection type and you can enter one or more credentials to attempt when interrogating those devices. So once you're ready, simply click run and the network discovery will begin. You will have real-time status in your discovery log. And then what I recommend you do is also switch over to the results view and you can begin to see the network devices that are discovered. Okay, so within just a few minutes here, I can see from just seeding this uh, discovery with one device out of 44 total devices in the network we've discovered 13 networking devices and Glueware has run its de device detect library to interrogate those and figure out exactly what vendor and uh, pull additional information. Glueware currently supports over 22 network operating systems for non-networking devices such as PCs, printers, IP phones and others they will not be discovered so that is the other 31 devices here in this example. Glueware is frequently adding other operating systems, so if support is required, it can be added quickly. So once you're, once you're good there, click into the grid and, and do a control A, select all, and say import selection, and say confirm. And we've now imported those into our device explorer, and we can begin to automate these devices. More importantly here probably is that now I have a lot of information like the vendors, the operating system, operating system version, serial number SKUs. We have a lot of detail in this inventory that we can use for planning purposes. So that wraps up this part of the demo. All right, the next feature we're going to look at in version 3.7 is the ability to embed workflows and also some enhancements around our intelligent model discovery. So basically the challenges are, you know, with Glueware, you have different applications for different purposes and workflows enable the ability to really give you an overall procedural execution uh, custom to your needs or something provided by Glueware. And you would navigate into workflows to run those. Well, some of the workflows are more logically associated with running something like within config modeling where you can click on a device and execute that workflow directly. So that's what embedded workflows are all about, which is simplifying and streamlining usability 
to enable access to that workflow without having to navigate away into another part of the application. So with that, we're going to look at, at an embedded workflow, and we're also going to get a chance to look at an updated workflow called the Intelligent Model Discovery, which enables Glueware to interrogate a live network device, read in the features configured and the parameters associated with those, and then enable you to directly create the data models in Glueware to then use those as a policy for network automation. So Olivier is going to help us out with this demo. Let's take a look at this in action. This particular box here, let me show you. This particular box here, um, there's nothing. It's just it's the only thing that's defined for this box is my IP, my username, and my password. And you can see that right now, uh, there's absolutely no model associated to it. So I'm going to right click on this one here, and I'm going to launch this particular workflow here. And I'm going to ask the engine, OK, well, go on it and tell me what's running on it. So what's running on it from a network function standpoint. And you have ways to define those network functions. Okay? We are trying to feed the most common ones, quas, etc. But the goal is that you are in control of what you want to discover. And so once this workflow will be done, it will expose me using the Glueware constructs all the different snippets relevance per network feature. And I will choose what I want. So it's almost done here. So what, what Glueware found, it had found NTP working on that box, quas, SNMP, syslog, and a username. Again, this is because this is what I have in my, what we call the binder. And the binder is the list of features that you want it to discover. And you can see all this difference. I mean, quas is, is pretty interesting. You have all these ACLs. You have all these class maps all those policy maps, and you have ways to tweak and say, I, I want this, I don't want this. But this is a way to onboard. Okay? So let's assume I want, I want everything. It's going to say, OK, you do want everything. I said, yes, I want absolutely everything for this box. Let me close this. And if I go back to my node map now, you can see that now my box has got all these different you know, construct builds with all those onboarded CLI that were, 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 um, were, on those, were, were in the box, all the class map stuff for quads, et cetera. So I mentioned the assembly before, the yellow box, right? This is the one that is right now activating those five features that are currently pointing, it's pointing at those five features. I can now use this assembly and assign this to all my other nodes and say, now this is your reference syslog, NTP, uh, Quas and the two other can remember the two other features that that's you know IMD you know, intelligent model discovery found. This next new feature in version 3.7, we're going to look at the ability to customize roles and permissions. And so the the basic challenge around this is that you know within large organizations you have many different players and people within the org with different needs of the network. Some just need to read, some need to make changes, some need to do a combination or some special combination. And pr prior to 3.7, Glueware provided five levels of role-based access control. Now with 3.7, you have the ability to fully customize the roles and permissions within your organization. You can also even provide filters on the devices that they have access to, and you can customize email notifications. And once you've customized those pieces, you can also tie it into your existing LDAP or RADIUS. So let's take a look at the demo. Okay, here we are in an instance of Glueware. And one of the th first things to make sure that you are straight on is what organization you have navigated into. So in this case, I have a very clean install here and just one single organization called Lab Network since this is just for a demo. To access the new role based access control and those custom definitions, you need to navigate into System Settings. In the System Settings view, go into Organization and go into the New Roles view. So here in the Roles view, when you navigate in, you're going to see the existing roles. So in most standard installations, you're going to see the five default 
roles that are there is operational admin, read only admin, system admin, system developer, and write admin. This particular org has one additional custom role already created. But let's go look at how to create a new role. So we simply click on the add new role and we name it. So for this demonstration, I'm going to call it net ops tier two west. And we have a copy from feature. So copy from is quite useful when let's say you know the glueware roles already and you want to make it very similar to an existing role but make some customization. I'm going to use the copy from feature and select the copy from a operational admin. So I hit create. So what you see here now is uh, how I can view the role and define the role. So I see my name, I see a description I can customize, I see if the role is enabled or disabled, and I have the option to click shared. When I enable shared, the role is available to all the children organizations that, in this case I have an org named Lab Network. If I had underlying organizations under that org as a parent org, th this role would cascade and be available within those as well. So now we're in the viewer here to view the actual permissions that we have available. And they're primarily broken down based on the Glueware applications like the model editor for config modeling, workflows, config drift and audit, OS manager, as you see here. And what you're seeing is what, there, there's a compare view with the operational admin. So right now, if you just glance down what this role has versus what the operational admin has, you can see it's fully a match because we've copied that role over. Okay. Now let's go ahead and customize. So one of the customizations I'm going to make is I'd like the tier two operations to be able to view the JSON structures. Glueware is a data model based platform and by being able to view the JSON data models you can see the underlying data underneath forms and it can be quite useful. So you just double click into the field and click the checkbox to enable uh, a new capability or permission for that role. As I scroll down here I'm good with pr the provisioning uh, of uh, capabilities. I'm good with running work workflows through level 2 the, those uh, levels are defined within the workflow creation. I am uh, good with config, drift, and audit in terms of being able to essentially run it but not, not be able to manage the audit policies themselves. I'm good with data export. So here's one I want to customize. In my organization, for example, if I don't want my tier 2 to be uh, changing operating systems running on devices, I'm going to go ahead and double click in and remove this capability completely. So essentially uh, at this level they won't be able to use the OS manager for example. So I've defeatured it in that case. Here's device manager. All of these things are fine. Uh, they don't have access to API. That's fine. Um, the file server is fine. And essentially I'm, I'm good with all of the rest of the options. And so we get down to the next category, which is the device filter. So you're here you're filtering what devices in your organization the users would be able to perform actions on. So I'm going to go ahead and add a rule here. Um, actually, the, the rule, the, the, um, the dialogue is here. I don't have to click add. I'm going to filter, you can filter on the vendor, the type, the name, host name. I'm going to filter on region and say when the, the device filter is the region equals west. And that is done. So now I have a non-matching condition with the standard operational admin because the standard op admin doesn't have a device filter. So I'm filtering to equal west. And then this bottom dialog is around email notification. So you can put in custom email addresses for various notifications from the systems. So I can say, you know, net ops at glueware.com. I can add multiple emails in there, hit enter, and you're essentially customizing the email notification 
you know, for the, the activity in these categories and I hit save. So that is how you build a new role. And just to tie into two additional things just to uh, fill you in on, just to make sure you're aware is, now that I've built this role, when I go into user management and I click on uh, manage users and add a user, now when I add a new user in the system and I look at the roles available, this new role is now available, a NetOps tier, NetOps tier 2 West. So I can assign that role to a new user that I create. The other thing to, to mention is that when I navigate back to Device Manager, here are all the devices on my network. If I look at any of the details on these devices, I can see there's a region. And it, if for this example, this device is in North. If I want to add that to the grid, I just click on the cog here. I come down, I can see region, and I enable that in the grid. Now I can see all of these are in the North region. And so this would be problematic for my example because my user be, would be automatically filtered to administer West-based uh, devices. So I could change that here. But that's pretty critical when you're enabling a filter understand what you're filtering on and make sure you, your user will be uh, good to go. So the only last thing to mention is that if you are synchronizing Glueware with your own LDAP or Radius, you have to enable in Glueware to pass those attributes from Glueware and you have to have those attributes set up on your side as well. So for more information on that, you can check the, the help. But for now, this concludes the demonstration. Thank you. In the second to last demo here, we're going to jump into a feature called the regex utility that is introduced in version 3.7. And just to set this up is that, you know, within Glueware, although it's a pretty much a no code environment, there are several components of the Glueware UI that leverage regular expressions to kind of parse out what you're looking for within CLI output from network devices. So as you're kind of trying to, you know, leverage the right regex to look at an operational state or a configuration parameter. This new utility will help you to kind of streamline that process to develop and validate it um, so you can move on much more quickly in your development using Glueware. So the new Glueware regex utility is JavaScript compatible flavor, although you know when you look at regex, it's a pretty standard syntax you'll find. Uh, we do have guidelines in the help and you can always Google, you know, regex syntax and find lots of examples out there. But basically, it's this embedded utility to test and validate those regex uh, on example outputs of CLI. Then you have a drop down for different match modes or view modes around single line, all lines, or matching sections. And then if you move, move the cursor over the window, you'll see a nice pop up with even more details about the regex and the output of it. So with that, let's jump into the demo. So in this demonstration, we're going to look at that new regex utility just previously described. So to define the regex utility, navigate into the model editor. And inside the model editor, you're going to find a new icon on the, the bottom toolbar, which is your regular expression utility or the editor here. So you just click on that button and it brings up the regex utility. So here we're going to have the ability to test our regular expressions and test them on example output or CLI test data. So to set up the use case here, I'm going to navigate to another Glueware instance. It's because I have one Glueware instance at our current release of 3.6, one at the new release of 3.7 that exposes that new regex editor. So in this uh, in this current uh, release, I'm using the use case of adding a state assessment. So very quick refresher on state assessments that on an assembly tied to one or more network devices, there is a state option available to click on it. And then you can enable or assign a state assessment policy. So let's jump to that policy. And in this policy, there is one state item being interrogated. 
and then there is a query on the data that is outputted from that as well. So what we're primarily looking at, and you can, you can move these windows over to expose the shortcuts, we're looking at this state item, the CLI state assessment policy here where regex is exposed. So the primary use case here is we want to interrogate the actual state of the BGP neighbor as a pre-check, post-check. So I'm trying to get my regular expression correct to extract out the BGP state to test it. So let's jump back to the regex editor here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy and paste output from a, in this case, it's a Cisco router. And I'm going to paste in my test data or my test string that I'm applying my regex to. So now this data is here. This is the output from a show IP BGP neighbor of a specific IP address in this case. You could have uh, essentially a, a much longer display here showing data from multiple neighbors. But I'm, in this example, I'm just focusing on one. So now we're going to go ahead and look at constructing the regular expression to extract this state out. So at a minimum, we're going to want to use I'll kind of build this out, copy and paste here for speed, is that to kind of deconstruct this, we have characters here, which is BGP state equals. So this is essentially a, a, an exact match as you float over here. You get a very nice kind of uh, indication of what the engine is doing and finding. So we got the BGP space state equals, so that's an exact case. And then we have a parentheses indicating a group. In this case, it, we're using what's called or referred to as a named group. So we're actually going to be assigning the variable that we capture, in this case, the word idle, to the BGP state name. And so we're querying this. And then the slash W plus is indicating that this is a match any word or character that follows. So that's the idle condition here. So this is quite simple and straightforward. Uh, just looking at examining a line and then actually just extracting or interrogating out, uh, in this case, the BGP state information. Just to make it a little more interesting and fun, we can, we can extend the regex to actually look at and extract more data as well. So now I've added a comma that is a character in this string we have another group in this case the group is being assigned to a name called neighbor state and I'm looking for it to be in a up or down state and I'm capturing that and then the the character or word for and then again another query assigning a value called uptime and then following the uh, group here or the space we're looking to capture the the digits so we're just capturing the 12 of the 12 weeks but you can see here how with regular expressions in the syntax you can use it to look for specific things you're looking for within the cli and extract that data out so let's complete this example by jumping over to the query here for a state assessment and i can see i'm pulling BGP state and, and I, I know once my once I have it right here I can copy paste that right back into my query when I look at my uh, query information here I am now applying a rule to process that data so the the processing of that data is looking at the BGP state field and it is looking for or expecting a value that is established so in my particular example here, where the, the one I copied out here is in an idle state, that would cause a failure of the condition if I'm looking for an established state. The state assessment would flag it as a failed state assessment because the expectation is established. So one last thing to cover here is there's a drop down for the modes. You have match single line, that's what this is. You could say match all lines. So if I had the output of multiple routers and I had multiple lines that had this case you'd want to use match all lines 
and you can do a match section as well. In this case, if I was doing a match section, I would be looking for something like BGP neighbor. So if I'm looking for a section within the configuration, I can find that. So again, as mentioned in the introduction, there's multiple places where Glueware uses regular expressions in config modeling and conditional rendering with uh, automation of configured features in state assessment, which I just showed to you. And of course, within audit, where you're auditing configurations and looking for that. So having regex skill set, it will help you a lot in your journey of automation, especially using Glueware. So with that, it concludes the demo today. Thank you. Here in the final demonstration, we're going to jump into the Ansible integration that leverages our published RESTful API we call Glue API. So Ansible integration was introduced with the Glueware version 3.6 release, and it's now been updated in the latest 3.7 release. And it is really kind of separate uh, from a re release structure than our normal release train, and it is versioned on its own. So the, the Ansible integration is now at version 1.2. So the challenges of the reason we're developing this is that oftentimes we begin to work with customers and they have dabbled in Ansible. They've invested some time and effort and have written some Ansible playbooks. And so we want to enable them to continue to leverage that investment or make it even better going forward if they continue to use it. The other challenge that customers face is that when you're working with Ansible, the inventory is a static file and that must be maintained. So if your underlying network inventory is changing, you gotta go and statically update all of those inventory files that are being referenced by your playbooks. So that's one uh, challenge addressed with uh, our very first plugin for inventory. And secondly is often when you push changes to the network layer, leveraging an Ansible play playbook that's using a module, you don't have a lot of visibility as to what really happened on the network layer. So you execute a playbook and you really kind of have to spot check or guess uh, or make some assumption as to what has happened exactly on the network. So how do you look at that change? And then the other side of that is around audit. When you have to potentially audit your network to see if you're in policy or not. So what we're gonna highlight in this demo is uh, the Glueware plugin for inventory that dynamically creates and maintains the inventory file and can also pass variables and also the brand new module that enables the ability to call Glueware drift to see config to identify changes in the configuration and to run audit to determine if you have any violations based on audit policies that you're looking for. So let's get right into the final demo. And I have just a list of uh, two iOS devices and five NOx switches and so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, so my setup that I have here I'm using um, my Windows box and I'm using SigWin where I have Ansible installed so I have Ansible I have Python 3.6 installed and um, I have some modules from Ansible also installed and I have my inventory plugin already installed I've already done the pip install um, and I have, I'm going to use VS Code today, or Visual Studio Code, to show you the files and how everything interacts. Um, so the first, the first thing you need to know when you set up, uh, when you're working with Ansible, you need a, like a, usually an Ansible config file. And I'm working from my test Ansible directory, and I have this config file set up, and it points to my, uh, this Glueware Devices YAML file as my inventory. And it's also a file that lives in this directory. And this is how I marry up my Ansible system through the, the inventory plugin to the Glueware system that I'm connected to. I'm at this particular IP address and I'm using this username and password. I have it set up in my, uh, I've created that username and password inside of my control system. And I said, you have access to these particular devices. And, um, and this is just you know, allowing me to have a cert location. This part of the setup allows me to map variables that we have inside of Glueware to variables I want to use inside of Ansible. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run a uh, demo of a particular playbook that I have that shows you 
the information that I have on my uh, devices. And it's just, I call it the display facts. So I'm going to go ahead and paste this in here. Go ahead and run it. And while it's running, I'm going to show you what the code does. So this is the playbook itself. And the playbook's running right here in the background. And uh, it has three tasks. Um, and I'm running on all of the hosts that I have currently set up in that particular organization I showed you inside of Glueware. And the first task is to gather the facts. And I'm only, since I've asked Ansible Playbook to give me all of the hosts, I, I need to narrow down for this particular task, since I'm running the iOS facts module, I only want to see the ones for iOS. So I'm using the standard Ansible Network OS to the iOS. Uh, with the iOS command, and it's only gathering the facts for the iOS switch. And you can see back here, it's skipped over my NOx switches because those don't match that criteria. Now it's gone on to the, the, the next task, which is this task here, where gather the NOx facts. And again, I have this task here, and I'm using the NOx module. Uh, and the last task is to display the information about the facts. And this gives me a quick little demonstration of how we can access the attributes. And this is, if you're used to using Ansible, and this is just the Ninja 2 templating modes where you can just display something. Uh, from the facts, I was able to gather the Ansible network host name, the Ansible version name. Um, this serial number here came from the inventory plugin through our inventory plugin in Glueware. If I go back to Glueware and I look, I have a serial number column here. And this serial number column uh, is the information for that particular host that popped up in my playbook. Um, so let me bring these back up. And just to wrap that around is how is Ansible able to talk to Glueware? We have a published API. So, so John wrote the, the <coughs> plugin that is leveraging our published API to make a programmatic call to Glueware to, to interact with that information. OK, so um, and the last thing I want to show is I, was, I, I have a custom attribute that I added inside of Glueware. And I was able to also use that in my Ansible plugin. Um, to get some information that I wanted to assign, which I'm going to use in my next examples, which is the NTTP server I wanted to have for each of my hosts. So I call it NTP server spec. And again, that's this particular column over here. And I can edit this spec. I can edit the, edit the attribute of it. I can change its number. I can change what it is and save it, and it would be associated to that device. And then I can use that in my further playbooks. So I see I'm running a little short on time, so I think what I'm going to do is skip ahead to the last playbook. Well, well, actually, this one's pretty short. So this is a standard playbook that you would run. You say, I want to change all of my, uh, my iOS devices to this NTP server. So if I go ahead and run this playbook, um, then what I'm going to do is grab this command, paste it in here. Run it. So this will run. This will run this particular playbook, and I'll, it's just doing this one task. It's updating the two 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 three. But what, what's interesting about this is um, if I run this, um, it just adds that into TP server. Really, what I wanted it to do was to replace it, um, and I can verify that by switching in Glueware over to our config audit uh, application, and I can. Click both these iOS devices that I'm currently running that playbook against, and do a, what, I call, what we call a capture. And what that does is that goes out to the devices, and you can see it running right here with these little dots. Uh, it's going out to the devices and getting what the current config is for that device. This is a snapshot feature of our, our config drift. And it's going to show, and I, earlier before the demo, I had taken a snapshot of, with the golden config of those devices. And now it's showing me that there's a difference I have this little icon up here that pops up, and it'll show me a difference. And this is the change the Ansible playbook just did in the background while I was clicking around here. And this is what the old device had on it. And this is the new, this is the new config. And the change it's showing me is it added this 2223 that I asked the Ansible playbook to do. But it also had the old one in there, which isn't my desired effect. It's not exactly what I wanted it to do. And the same with this other device. So I've got a third playbook um, to fix all this. And I'm going to go ahead and run that while this is being displayed. So, that so, so while John's running that, that Drift utility or app gives you the ability to say, what did Ansible do on my network devices? Sometimes when you're running scripts, you're, you're lacking that visibility. And then you know, you could, uh, using Drift, you can see exactly what changed. 
using audit, if you have an expected state, you can just audit for the expected state, and if something is not meeting the expected state, it's going to violate your audit. So it's again around Drift and Audit and, and the Ansible plugin complementing um, what you may be doing through Ansible. So I increased the intelligence of my playbook. This is the second version of that NTT playbook. And I increased the intelligence. I have five tasks here now. The first thing I decided, okay, I'm gonna, I need to grab the config first. So I'm using this module to grab the config and I store it in this variable. And then the second task, I'm going, okay, I need to, from this config, basically extract out where the NTTP server lines are. So that's what this logic's doing. And then in the third task, I'm taking that logic that I got from the previous task and I'm um, saying remove all those uh, NTP servers that I found because I don't want any of them. I'm going to put my own in. So that's what this particular command says, no NTP server and the particular item that I extracted. And then the last one is, okay, now apply the NTP server, but this time instead of a hard-coded value that I had in my previous playbook, grab it from the config that I had or the information that I had inside of my, my, uh, my device that I had managed inside of uh, Glueware. So then it's, it went ahead and it ran that config and it did those changes. So if I go back over here and I click these two items again and uh, click them without highlighting things and then click the capture again, it'll go back out, start a capture on those devices and it'll either, if it shows me these uh, double circles where it's unchanged, that means I'm back in line with my reference implementation, which was uh, basically, what, when I captured the, the original config, it had this NTP server set to that one, and this one set to 3.3.3.3. So this one shows me it's back to alignment, and it's back to alignment. If I double click on this, I can go find the NTP server line somewhere in this config. It's probably yeah. toward the bottom. The the Keep going. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there it is. So yeah, it set it back to this. And, that's, and the reason I didn't see a diff because it now matches my golden config. So now it's in a line. So thank you very much to John for running that Ansible demo. It's uh, ex exciting and very powerful to see that integration and the ability to leverage the Glueware API as well. So um, now that we're wrapped up with the demo, there's kind of three key options in terms of next steps. If you've seen it, something that interests you and want to take the next step, first you can simply request a demo. So glueware.com slash request dash demo and set up a meeting with us and we'll show you a deeper demonstration around your needs. And you can also email sales at glueware.com. The next step or option is if you are more of a hands-on person and want to actually run some test cases, we offer the Glueware test drive. So you request it using glueware.com slash test dash drive, fill out a short form, and generally within 24 hours, we can have you spun up on a virtual system to execute several use cases to kick the tires on Glueware and understand what we're about in even more detail. The third option is what we want to highlight is announced. Again, it was announced first at Onug Digital Live. It is still being offered. And we are, again, partnering with Microsoft, and we've gone live in the Microsoft Azure Marketplace to offer the Glueware software. So to Glue, go to glueware.com slash business dash continuity dash offer. If your organization qualifies, we will provide a 30-day free pilot to production trial. This is not just a, a drop-off software. This is an assessment with you to understand your business needs. Um, support in the deployment of the application and again to your needs um, the onboarding of your system and get you up and running using the applications and capabilities within Glueware that you need so it is really a full-blown supported pilot to production at no cost to your organization to get started so with that would like to thank you for your time today on the webinar and again uh, please keep checking back uh, glueware.com follow us on linkedin twitter and our youtube channel and we look forward to working with you have a great rest of your day thank you